Hi, I'm Saidi and I'm currently on my bunk bed. So for those of you who don't know, I'm currently a university student, which means that 90% of interactions at social gatherings start with, so what's your major? And when people ask me what I'm majoring in, they're usually surprised that I'm a math major. First off, I think there's this image a lot of people have of math majors being totally monochromatic, hyper quote-unquote left-brained people whose idea of fun ends at like competitive Rubik's cube solving or something like that, which, which honestly sounds kind of cool actually, but <laughs> this notion is actually pretty untrue in my opinion. Going into college, I was scared that since I wasn't an art major, it would be hard to meet classmates who are also into the arts. It's kind of funny, but being in higher math classes in college can have a really similar vibe to being in an art class. You've got super cool, funky outfits, and I've met some insanely creative people through these classes. About a year ago, I attended this dinner thing with a few other math majors and a bunch of math professors from around the world, and I was so happy and excited to learn that almost every professor there was also an artist of some kind. You had composers, visual artists, poets, and there was even a postdoc mathematician who is also a trained ballerina and creates her own choreographies to express mathematical concepts and then gets them professionally filmed, which is just like one of the coolest things I've ever heard. I've always thought biology was super interesting, but something that's always bothered me about the idea of just going into biology is that it's only specific to a certain degree. And that's obviously not to critique the study of biology. I mean, that's a very necessary quality of that science and it's a beautifully important science. But for example, you learn that certain biological processes take place, but not the physical fundamental reasons behind the processes. So that leads you to chemistry, which explains the chemical reactions and all that jazz behind the biological processes. But that's still not quite specific enough. So then you zoom in even closer and that lands you at physics, which will explain why the molecules behave the way they do in chemical reactions. But you can still zoom in even further, move past all the measured science and into a fundamental system of truths, which is essentially mathematics. And I think that's pretty cool. But something I really want to get across is don't feel like you can't be a math person just because you're an artist. The whole are you left-brained or are you right-brained thing is just plain out not true. I mean, your brains are crazy and awesome and fluid and always changing, so if you think something is interesting, just go for it. Don't put yourself into a little box and limit yourself from exploring things you're curious about just because you feel like you're not that kind of person, you know? Do things! Explore! And honestly, you might even find some really cool connections between things you thought were very unrelated. And one of the best examples of that, I think, is math and art. All right, that's pretty much it for my rant today. So now I'm gonna go into what's going on with this drawing. Thank you so much for sticking around. So the idea for this piece comes from me staring at my bunk bed and going, haha, what if there was water up there? So I took a picture of my bunk bed and started drawing based on that. Having a reference, especially when it comes to things like blankets, is so, so, so useful. And if you're able to find, or even better, create a reference image for yourself, I absolutely recommend that. Fabric can be very difficult to get right without the texture coming across as completely different materials or super stiff. At this point, what you're seeing me doing is some very low quality line art. Just curious to see what it would look like over the piece so far. In the end, I decided I preferred it lineless, but I still might go back in the future and make a lined version. And now I'm starting on the blankets, which took very long, and which I worked on very intermittently because I could not draw fabric folds continuously for that long. Around this point, I was thinking it might be really cool to add in some fish, not only because I love fish, but also two other reasons. First, it's a nice channel to introduce a contrasting color, and second, it's a really great way to hammer into the viewer that the substance on the top bunk is water and not some other material. I started off with just one little goldfish as a test to see if I liked the way the colors gelled with each other, and I did, so I made sure to come back to the fish idea after working some more on the blankets.
So as I said before, I wanted to use fish as a way to emphasize the waterness of the water, but I felt like there was still more potential for water interaction in this piece. I decided something I could do was to make the girl sitting on the bed do something to even more clearly communicate to the viewer that the rectangular prism is a liquid. Something more or less unique to liquids is the ripple effect, so I thought having her create some ripples would work well here. I decided to have her place the tip of her finger at the front face of the prism, making some nice water ripples. Now initially I was just going to have some fish swimming normally around the water, but while I was working I got this vision in my head of the fish kind of congregating around her eyes, if that makes sense. I wasn't sure if it would work, so just to test out the idea, I very loosely sketched out some orange blobs to represent the fish. I actually really liked the effect this had on the piece in the end, so after that I went back and added some more little details to the fish like eyes and fins. At this point, I wanted to add some more contrast to the piece and guide the viewer's eyes more firmly towards the top bunk. I actually might like both versions about the same, with the darker surroundings and without the darker surroundings, but so you guys know how I created that shadow effect, I used a saturated purple on a multiply layer and colored on top of everything except the prism of water. In this way, the water looks like it's glowing. Something else I did to create this luminescent effect was airbrush a pale pink over the water using a soft light layer. Finally, I used a light pink on low opacity and drew the little lines around the perimeter of the water shape to create that water reflection effect. So that leads us to the finished piece. Really hope you like this drawing and thank you so much for watching. If you want to check out more of my art, I'm really active on Instagram and I'll link that down below in the description. Bye!